We all want to live to ride again, and we owe it to our loved ones and our partner's loved ones to return safely from every ride. But just because you made it home again, how do you know if you were doing it right or just got lucky? The Sierra Avalanche Center has a risk management process to help you do it right. It has flow, like a good ride should, so following it doesn't interfere with your riding day. Who else is going is a more important question than most of us realize. Over 90% of avalanche accidents are caused by the people involved. Clearly, the people we ride with and the choices we make together are at least as important as other factors like conditions and terrain. You might try to be exclusive about who you ride with, but in reality, none of us makes the perfect riding partner. Consider the qualities that each person contributes to the team and plan the day accordingly. A great riding crew is the foundation for a successful day. The Sierra Avalanche Center publishes the avalanche forecast at 7 a.m. Teach yourself how to get the most out of it by reading it every day. If you find any unfamiliar terms, use the links to learn more. The avalanche problem starts with the avalanche type. Each type behaves differently and deserves different safety margins and group management techniques. The next component of the avalanche problem is the anticipated location. The locator rows shows the general aspects and elevations where that avalanche type will most likely exist. It's a broad generalization across the whole forecast region. The likelihood and size are specific to that avalanche problem. Anything bigger than a small avalanche is big enough to bury or kill a person. Problems with higher likelihoods and larger sizes push the danger rating higher up the scale. The weather forecast comes from the National Weather Service in Reno. It's specific to the mountains and avalanche conditions instead of the more urban-focused forecast you'll find elsewhere. If you're planning to ride in an area without an avalanche forecast, factor a high level of uncertainty into the rest of your plans and keep your terrain choices very conservative. Mountain riding is too dynamic to make specific linear plans. Instead, before you leave, create safety margins based on your riding partners and anticipated conditions. Agreeing to these in advance leaves options open and makes decisions easier once you're out on the snow. Morning. Hey, how's it going? Hey, good, how are you? Good, man. Check out the forecast. Yeah. Don't forget the details, including plans for when something goes wrong. Making assumptions about the details without actually discussing them can increase the consequences of seemingly minor mistakes. Singing as day moves on, we might want to watch out for this area. Now, remember you guys, we were looking at the forecast, uh, moderate danger rating today. We've got isolated wind slabs out there and then the potential of uh, loose wet in the afternoon, so. Stop to talk several times throughout the day. Your first stop should be right at the trailhead to review your plan and check emergency gear. Manage your group for conditions and terrain by using the right spacing, spotting, and communication techniques. If you're not in avalanche terrain, the buddy system is a popular spacing and spotting technique. Make sure you keep an eye on each other and use radios and hand signals to communicate. In avalanche terrain or underneath it, use spacing and spotting techniques that only expose one person at a time. If someone gets stuck while riding in or under avalanche terrain, don't go help. Oh, you guys have just made it up here. Go ahead and send the next rider. Excellent, Duncan. I'll be heading up here. I'll, uh, 30 seconds. Maintain awareness of conditions by using the conditions alerts checklist. Do you see any current or recent avalanches? Are there other signs of instability like shooting cracks on test slopes or reactive snowpack tests? Does the advisory mention a persistent problem or are there facets in the snowpack? Is there current or recent loading from snowfall, wind, or rain? The more conditions alerts you observe, the more terrain alerts you need to stay away from. Maintain awareness of terrain by using the terrain alerts checklist. Are you about to go onto slopes steeper than 30 degrees? If so, is it an obvious avalanche path? Are there trigger points or terrain traps? Does this terrain match where the forecast warned avalanches could occur?
At the end of the day, have a quick debrief, not only to discuss what went well, but also to acknowledge mistakes. Submitting observations to the Avalanche Center is a valuable way to end your day. Summarizing the conditions you observed helps with lifelong learning and also contributes to the greater community. Following this daily flow is not only an effective way to manage your avalanche risk. With practice, it's also an efficient way to structure your ride that feels natural and doesn't get in the way of having fun on the snow. For more information or to support the Avalanche Center, please visit the Sierra Avalanche Center website.